Hello. Hello. I'm Kim. I'm Jonathan. And we're from the YouTube channel Soul Rings. Uh, so the question is, what is your experience with kitchen table magic? Well, Jonathan? All right, well, I first started playing magic on the very first Jewels of the Planeswalkers game on Steam. Uh, after that, I found someone who played it magic in real life. I bought some cards and started playing uh, multiplayer games with a group of people. And um, that's the group that we still play with yes. most weeks now, after years and years later. And um, it was only a little while after that that I started going to pre-releases and um, Friday Night Magic and doing drafting and that kind of thing. So, how about you, Kim? Well, that's been my primary experience with Magic as well. I mean, I have been to stores and played Magic. I've played Magic online, obviously. Um, but the one I do most often is Kitchen Table Magic. Every week to two weeks with our group of friends. And it's a lot of fun. I find that it's a great social event um, and you get to do something you love, which is magic. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think I view kitchen table magic very differently. It's actually a different game to me than playing Draft or Magic Online. Um, a completely different game. Uh, for one thing, when we play Kitchen Table Magic, we only ever play multiplayer. Um, six to card decks usually, we sometimes play Commander, um, but six to card decks um, and no uh, hard and fast rules, other than the fact that our group frowns on infinite, infinite combos. combos and other overpowered decks. Yeah. Because that's not fun. If, if one person has a deck where they take many, many extra turns, even if it's not an infinite combo, we did have one person do that once. Then we say to them, that's very nice, never do it again. Yes. So that was the So they get a chance they get a chance to show it off, but they know that it's it's not fun for everybody to have that deck brought out often. Yeah, I think um, we self regulate, I think there's an honest system. Yes, yeah. Um, I would say that also, our power level goes up and down. Like, um, one person might bring a particularly strong deck to one of the games, um, and then everyone will start, you know, the gloves will come off, everyone will start putting in a lot more stronger combos, uh, bringing uh, more powerful acceleration, more powerful card draw. Yes. Um, There's definitely a meta game. Uh, we had just phases where people would go through these particular deck types, for example, there was a phase we all went through where most people were playing Bruna decks. And so you noticed after a while that people were starting to build anti-Bruna decks specifically because they knew that Bruna was difficult to get around. Yes. Um, and then of course the Brunas went away and then the anti-Bruna decks went away and then it was consuming aberrations. And uh, people started packing Grizzly Spectacle in uh, decks with black. So Grizzly Spectacle is a 4 mana black instant uh, destroy target creature and then that player mills the power of the creature that mm. gets destroyed. When you've got a multiplayer game of five people and one person's got a consuming aberration or two, and there are a few spell and it's been out for a couple of turns, and they've done like a mind grind a couple of times, everyone's milled maybe 10 to 15 cards, mm. which means your consuming aberrations are like between 50, 60, maybe even 70 power and toughness. Yeah, well, between four players, that would be closer to 20 cards in the graveyard. But you get my point. Yes. Even if it's a 40-40 um, consuming aberration. One grisly spectacle, mm -hmm. and that person has to mill their, pretty much the most of their library. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, that was kind of funny. So one other thing I would like to mention about Kitchen Table Magic is that, for me personally, it's a really, really good way to unwind when I've had a very bad day. So if I've been having a bad day, and it's not that uncommon. I'd like to say it isn't that common, but it's not... That's uncommon. We all have bad days. Yes. Um, sometimes I just feel my first instinct, my gut instinct, is to stay at home. I don't really want to go anywhere. I just want to mope around the house. But I know that every time I've had a bad day and, and I've ignored my gut instinct and I've gone out to a magic game with friends, I've invariably, 100% of the time, felt much, much, much better about halfway through because I'm having fun and I'm with people that I really like and it's just a great experience. So, um, yeah, I, I actually actively, if I'm having a bad day, I will often really, really want to go and play Magic now. It just yeah. always makes me feel better. 
That's cool. So that's one thing that I love about it. Definitely. I kind of view playing multiplayer magic, kitchen table magic, similarly to D&D. Uh, when we play D&D, which is something we also do uh, every other week or so, we, you don't think about winning or losing in D&D. It's all about um, just the good times and exactly. uh, the fun yes. interactions yep. and the unexpected events that crop up. Yes. Um, same thing with Kitchen Table Magic. I never actually think very much about um, winning and losing in very serious terms. I love the creative side. Love, love, love it. That's why I love Draft. That's why I love Seal. Well, Limited in general, I guess. Because mm. um, you're making something with what you've been given and you can be creative within that context. But when you are focusing on the competitive aspect of that, that means you have to, as I said, do all that research. And there's the beauty of the less competitive formats or the non-competitive formats is that you can just be very silly and just say, I want to do a goat tribal deck, which I have actually genuinely done. I'm trying to build a goat tribal deck. I think it's just so silly and fun. Yeah. And I like that. I like building decks like that. The, Not purely that, but I do like it. The nice thing is as well is that you can do things that genuinely surprise people. Exactly. So you can find this combo with a, you know, an old card and you see that it combos with a new card and bring them together and you play it and your combo then assembles itself and everyone looks over and goes, ah. Oh. Yeah, that does work. So that's kind of fun. Yeah, it is. Um, when I play Kitchen Table Magic, if I walk away having not won a single game, it doesn't actually bother me. Agreed, um, yes. Because I, I don't take it seriously. Because you can't take it seriously. Um, the other thing about multiplayer is that sometimes you win purely by being the player who is just very... commits the least. Exactly. I've seen a few of your decks, for example. You have a few decks where the whole goal is just... Be defensive, be defensive while I assemble my combo and then kill everybody in one hit on one turn. And uh, so no one targets you because you're not a threat. They just think, oh, he hasn't done anything for four or five turns and you're actually just secretly massing the cards in your hand and you're mm. going to play them from your hand. You, yeah. And so, so, of course, you're not targeted and no one knows to expect it when you strike. And the other thing as well is you can try and rattlesnake your opponents away. Or, or else if you have, like, defensive, like, walls. Yes, um, yeah. Or the other one is um, assass uh, like, what's it called? Royal Assassin. Royal Assassin is yes. a very good Rattlesnake card. Yes. If one player does uh, make themselves a target by going, alright, I'm going to play out all of these cool combo pieces and this planeswalker, everyone's like, whoa, well this person's clearly the threat here. But and actually... they, they sort of unify, attack this person if you keep out of it. But I actually really like that about multiplayer games though, because if someone is in danger of dominating, then you can suddenly have three or four other people gang up on them and then even the playing field a bit more. And that, that does make it, it... it can make for longer games, but I always also think it makes for more interesting games because it's not just one person dominating the field. You do have to take uh, that metagame into consideration. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, it's all about I the politics, the politics. It is the politics, and I like dealing with the politics. I think mm. that's... And of course, quite enjoyable. We, all, and we, we, always, we always, not trash talk, but we always have table talk, you know? Oh yes, like, yeah, we you, do. You know, like someone will say, oh, Kimberly's been drawing an awful lot of cards. And, uh, you know, you might be saying, oh, don't worry, these, you know, like, I'm not doing anything. You know, Jonathan's the one who's got that particularly... That his plane talk is ticking up pretty high. Yeah, Probably I'm just do drawing something cards about with my... Zero two Mesa Enchantress, that's not a problem. Just, just ignore the Mesa Enchantress. Nothing, not to a threat. nothing to see here. Exactly. Uh, yes, yeah, so we're playing Draft Online or um, at our local game store, Quenda, in mm -hmm. Midland in Perth, Australia. Um, then um, we. I do take it more seriously and I do play to win. I play competitively. It's a different environment when you go out to a store and you're spending money. You want to get the most out of the experience, I think. Yeah, yeah. And online, the same thing. Yeah, I, have the, I have the exact same opinion online. Um, I'll play to win. Our players in our playgroup has a cube, which is amazing yes, fun. Yes, it is. It's great. Our, our cube is actually quite, um, quite well, not our cube, uh, Martin's cube is actually quite different to what you'd expect um, because it's designed for multiplayer games. But it's been fine-tuned over years and years and years and it's so much fun to play now. Cube is probably my favourite format. Um, and, I enjoy uh, it, yeah. Yeah, it's just so much fun. Um, drafting is 
probably my one of my favorite ways of playing Magic. Definitely. And Cube is just like sort of the 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 best iteration of drafting. Um, I, I I like I like it I like drafting environments which are very interesting. One of my favorite draft environments is Innistrad, mm -hmm. Triple Innistrad. I love that draft environment. Um, it's a lot of you know fun little things that always happen. Someone does a kicked right of replication on Mer on Grey Merchant of Asphodel. Um, you know the funny time that one person sort of. Um, has to cast removal on their own creature to prevent some horrifying yes. co combo from, from, from coming around. There's all sorts of fun stuff that happens in Kitchen Table Magic. Yeah. Make for good stories afterwards. And we always rehash them at, at, at later games. We do, yeah. If you want to check out our channel, uh, Soul Rings, um, we've invented our own format called Couples Draft. Yes. Um, where we draft a line and we alternate each pick. And we're supposed to not uh, interfere with the other person's picks. Doesn't always. In theory. <laughs> <laughs> I think we both forget not to interfere sometimes. We're both, we're, we both have very interestingly different styles of drafting and invariably there are arguments, but it's all great fun. It, the, uh, that's the best part. <laughs> of course, naturally. Yeah. Um, Milo, I just want to say that uh, we've very much enjoyed your videos. Yes. We actually had a chaos draft after watching your chaos draft. Uh, so you're very inspiring and uh, keep up the good work and we look forward to all the future videos. Take care. Bye bye.